Fresh water. We travel in it. We drink it. Farm with it. We use it in industry. Dump chemicals and garbage into it. And we waste it. As human population and consumption grow, you might wonder how much water is left for us to use. We've been warned for years of a coming global water crisis, but water is tough to track as it moves around the planet, recycling, changing form, sometimes torrential, sometimes invisible. How can scientists know before it's too late if we've used too much or dangerously altered the water cycle? By now, most people are familiar with how scientists measure climate change. One simple number. The Earth's average temperature. It's easy to graph as it goes up and down, and it's relatively easy to define a threshold we shouldn't cross. Some scientists think that we can do the same for fresh water. In 2009, the Stockholm Resilience Center declared what they called the planetary boundary for freshwater use. They determined that Earth's total available fresh water for humans was roughly 4,000 cubic kilometers a year. Use more than that, and humanity would be in trouble. Fortunately, they also calculated that we're currently only using a little over half of that. And while they warn that consumption continues rising, Earth, they said, is still within a so-called safe operating space. Good news, and simple to understand. But Earth isn't a big tub of water, argued critics. Fresh water is far more complicated. Take the water cycle. In school, you probably learned it went something like this. Water evaporates from the oceans to form clouds, which drift over land where it rains, filling lakes, then runs off through rivers back to the sea. It's a soothing, self-contained vision of how water moves around the planet. But what really happens is more like this. Water interacts with virtually every aspect of the environment, affecting and in turn affected by the rest of the natural world in complex feedback loops. And of course, people influence the water cycle too, in a big way. For example, as humans warm the planet, evaporation increases, forming more water vapor, a powerful greenhouse gas. This leads to more warming, which then alters and destabilizes the water cycle. And that's not all. Water forms clouds, which reflect sunlight, cooling the planet. It sustains forests, which transpire more water vapor, which causes more rain. Soils and roots trap water so more plants can grow. Water carries nutrients to river deltas and carbon into the ocean, where it's sequestered for years, and so on. Modify this water cycle too much, and parts of the environment could change, or Earth's life support systems could collapse. To reflect this complexity, some scientists have now developed two freshwater boundaries instead of one, taking into account water in all its states and roles. The first is the blue water boundary. It measures the fresh water that we can see or touch in lakes and rivers, in aquifers deep underground or frozen in the ice caps. This is the water we commonly think of when we talk about overuse. But researchers also defined a new boundary for what they call green water. This is less tangible, more transient. It includes the rain, snow, hail, and other forms of precipitation that don't run off or recharge groundwater, but are stored in soil around the roots of plants, on top of the soil, or even inside the plants. It also includes the water that enters the atmosphere again through evapotranspiration. We may not be aware of this water all the time, but it plays a crucial role in sustaining the systems that keep the Earth alive. And measuring the state of green water around the planet may be an even better early warning signal of a global crisis than monitoring just blue water. It's not clear if we've encroached the blue water boundary, but in 2022, researchers warned that we have crossed the green water boundary, meaning we violated the threshold keeping Earth's water cycle in balance. This is already resulting in sudden and drastic shifts in precipitation, altering the amount of water stored in plants and soils, and changing evapotranspiration rates around the planet. The current surge in extreme weather events, increasingly common in intensifying droughts and floods, offer a warning of our deepening planetary water crisis. There is hope, scientists say. If we can return blue and green water processes to where they were before the industrial age, then the Earth and humanity could be okay. And, knowing whether or not we're entering the freshwater danger zone should help policymakers worldwide determine just how much water we have left and how much time we have to respond to a coming global crisis. Though some experts warn that even these new ways of thinking about the total water supply fail to take into account one important element, human beings. Like it or not, water management is a human activity determined by competing needs and even competing cultures. 
Above all, it's an inherently local matter, they say. Millions of people are already facing a water crisis today. Trying to set a single global boundary for water, especially one we may not have crossed yet, could distract from their plight. So how policymakers will deal with this complex problem is still unknown. Clearly, we need to devise science-based, local, regional, and global water management strategies to stabilize Earth's water cycle while still meeting human needs.